Hey guys, what's up? It's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download data through the different endpoints provided by Rotten Tomatoes through its JSON API. Now we are going to use the Voli library to send a JSON request and load the data inside our recycler view starting with this video. On our pre lollipop devices here and our lollipop devices, our main activity is running with several tabs which currently display nothing. We are going to put fragments inside these tabs that are going to contain data from different JSON endpoints. Now the endpoints that we are interested in are movie search, upcoming movies and box office movies out here. Now when the user clicks on one of the items in the list, then we show more details about the movie like info, cast and reviews. So the three tabs are going to have data from Rotten Tomatoes API. The first tab is going to contain search results from Rotten Tomatoes API. For that, I plan to use a search view for which I need to talk about the search framework in Android. So first, I won't be getting into that tab. The second tab, I think I'm going to have the box office movies or the top running movies that are currently running out there. And that can be done easily done in this video, which we will take a look at. And the third tab is going to cover the upcoming movies. Now I'll remove the extra tabs after I'm done with these three tabs and let's get started. First, go inside your Android manifest.xml, ensure that you have the internet permission, else your app will crash. Go to your main activity, inside your own create, you would notice that our view pager is loading data with the help of this adapter called view pager adapter. Let's find out where this adapter is. It's at the bottom of this class. So here's our class view pager adapter, inside which we have our method called fragment get item. In other words, given a position, it simply returns a fragment at that position. So far, we simply said return my fragment dot get instance. We did not bother about creating separate fragments, but now we have to do that. We need three fragments to contain data from the three different feeds that we plan to load inside our app. So let's go ahead and construct those fragments. There are two steps in creating a fragment. One is to create a class. Two is to create the UI that's going to tie or get associated with that fragment class. Let's do that. Just now, I have made some very crucial changes in the package structure of my app. The activities package contains all the activities, the adapters contain the respective adapters, extras contain classes like utilities and other stuff, fragments contain all our fragments, logging contains the logger classes if you have any and the core package which is material test contains our my application class over there. Network contains Wally Singleton for now, the Pojo class is going to support all the model classes that we need for our upcoming work. And then if you go to the views class that contains all the custom views, the custom layout and other types of layout and views that you plan to use in your app. Now with this structure, let's go ahead to our fragments package and make a fragment. I will show you how to make one. You can definitely replicate the process for making the other two. You can simply go here to say new and then say fragment here, make it fragment blank here. And then at this point, it's going to say create the fragment layout fragment XML. For starters, we'll call this fragment search for the first fragment that we are building here. Make sure the UI is named fragment underscore search. It says include the fragment factory methods and include the interface callbacks. Now we don't need interface callbacks. We'll simply cancel that and select the fragment factory methods, which I believe is going to create our static singleton method that we need. So at this point, I'm going to just hit finish and our fragment should be ready. It says add the files to the git. Okay. So replicating the same process, I'm going to create two more fragments and that is going to be called fragment upcoming and fragment box office. So following the same process, I have created three fragments here inside my fragments package. All of them have a blank UI. But first, we need to make sure that we use them properly inside our get item method of our view pager adapter class inside main activity. Inside the get item, let's put a switch case to decide which fragment to instantiate based on the position that is supplied to us. So I've created a blank switch case here that takes the position argument. Now to distinguish the cases, I've created three variables here at the top. That is movie search results for zeroth position, movies hits on the box office hits for the first position and movies upcoming for the second position. So let's use these variables as our case statements and inflate the right fragment based on what position we encounter. So there's my three case statements for movie search results, the hits and upcoming part. All we need to do now is create the right fragment inside each of them. So for the movie search results, I can simply go here and I can say fragment, you can directly write fragment search dot new instance. Now the problem with this method currently is that it needs two arguments. If you open fragment search, this was generated by Android Studio and whenever it does it, it takes this new instance method with two string arguments 
which it tries to supply as a bundle and set arguments on that fragment. For now, we don't really have any practical purpose for using the two arguments, but still, let's pass some empty blank strings over here for now. Maybe we'll need those parameters later and we'll change the type and the number of arguments based on that later. At this point, you see an error here. It says required android.support.v4.app.fragment and found something else. Now, this is one of the most wonderful errors I had experienced commenting with people in the comments of the videos. You see, the problem lies right here inside Android Studio. When it generates a fragment class, it uses the android.app.fragment. We don't need that. As soon as you change the package name here inside fragment search, the error in main activity at this statement is gone. And we need to do the same thing for the other two fragments as well. So let me do that. So depending on the value of the case statement, we create an object of the right fragment and simply return the general fragment reference at the bottom here. Now notice that at the top, we have extended the fragment state pager adapter. Use this when you want the fragments to have their state saved when you swipe across different fragments through the view pager. If you use a fragment pager adapter here, the on save instance state will not be called for any of these fragments. In other words, when you rotate the device and you download data from the JSON feed, that data is going to be lost if you can't save it. In that case, the only option that remains with you is to go here at the top and have a off screen page limit for the view pager by simply saying view pager dot set off screen page limit. And here you can increase or set the number of pages that the view pager should keep in memory at a given time. Now remember, you specify more pages here, that means the view pager is going to take more memory to store all the pages together. And this is the reason why the documentation clearly says that use fragment pager adapter when there are a few static pages and use the fragment state pager adapter when there are many pages and you need to save the state of data across different pages. So right now, if you run the app, this is what you see on pre-lollipop and lollipop. You are currently at position zero. The get item method is called, and here you're returning an object of fragment search, which is exactly what you see here in the lower part of the screen. Now, when you go to position one, there is fragment box office, and in position two, there is fragment upcoming. Go to our JSON field, take this URL, and enter your API key and the number of results that you want. In our case, that would be the API key that I've specified here for myself, and the limit equals to 20 in my case. So you get a lot of information here. Now displaying everything at the same time is going to be disastrous because your user doesn't expect that. We are going to need some data that we won't show to the user like the ID. At the same time, we are going to show data like title, year and stuff. So let's decide what to show to the user and what not. We are going to show the title of the movie. We are going to show the year, but not from here. The year is given in a more specific version here at the bottom, which says release underscore dates. And inside that we have 2015 -0206 which is the precise information that the user is looking for. In the ratings part, we are going to show the audience score of 70. We will show the critic score when the user clicks on more details for that movie. Synopsis is again going to be shown in the details of the movie. Thumbnails, all four of them are the same image as you can see the name of the file here. We are going to use one of them and that image file is not big either. It's a pretty small image. So we can't use a grid view because it will look dirty and the image will look blurry. So we are going to have a recycler view where the image is on the left side and the other piece of information like title, year is on the right side. So going further down, we are not going to show any information about the cast, but we can use that information to show in the next screen. You go to the bottom, there are other links like self, which shows more details about that movie, cast, the actors, reviews, and similar movies, if any, to this particular gender or category. We are going to save these links with ourselves so that we can query them later in our app. Based on all the data here, inside my Pojo package, I have created the movie class which acts like a model. It has several fields. I may add more fields depending on what data we need as we proceed further in the app. I have not added getters and setters currently, but that is no big deal, which you can do on your, on your own. If you go and take a look at this image, it's a pretty small image. And this brings you to the question of which library you will use to load this image inside a recycler view. Is it going to be Woli? Is it going to be Picasso? Is it going to be Universal Image Loader? And for that, I have a nice article for you guys. Here is a post by BigNerdRanch.com where they have compared the image loading libraries in Android. At this point, Picasso is compared against Woli to give you the benefits and disadvantages of both this library. Now, there is no discussion here about the universal image loader, but I'm sure that you can find some other link for that. And if you do find it, do let me know in the comments as well. 
Now, one of the most important things is in Voli, where they say that Voli is network image views more aggressive about request cleanup than Picasso and more conservative in terms of its garbage collection usage patterns. Now, it relies on strong memory references and cleans up all the request data as soon as a new request is made. And this point is pretty important because you see, based on this, here they say that Voli is the only solution if you want to have high resolution compressed images in your app. Now, what I believe reading that is that Voli is somewhat a bit more efficient than Picasso when it comes to dealing with high resolution images. But in our case, we don't have any of them. So we are going to use Voli still because we already set up the image loader to use with Voli. So going to my custom application class, I have hard coded my API key for Rotten Tomatoes. We can go to fragment box office. I have created three variables here, one representing the singleton, the image loader and the request queue. Inside our onCreate method of this fragment, we are going to send our Voli JSON request. First step, initialize the Voli singleton by saying Voli singleton is Voli singleton dot get instance. For the next step, initialize the request queue by saying Voli singleton dot get request queue. Let's see if we are able to send a request to this endpoint and get JSON data out of that. If you take a look at our JSON feed, the starting point is a curly brace. Now this means that we are actually looking at a JSON object even though the primary data contained is within an array. There are two types of requests that Voli supports. One is a Voli JSON object request and the other is a JSON array request. Now if the root element started with a square bracket and ended with that, it means that you're looking at a JSON array. In that case, you're going to need the JSON array request. In our case, what we need is the Voli JSON object request. So we simply go here and say JSON object request, request and create an object of that. Now we are going to specify a lot of parameters here. The first thing that we need to specify is the method. In our case, it's going to be a get request. The second thing that we like to specify is our URL. So let's add this URL at the top. Inside fragment box office, I have made this final static variable, which contains the URL of our box office.json endpoint. Here, I'll make a utility method where I can append the API key and the number of results that we want in terms of limit. So in this utility method called get request URL, I supply an int parameter to specify the number of results that I want, which I can customize later. Here I take the URL that I just defined above, append a question mark and our API key equals to, and then I get our API key from the my application class where I declared it here in the first place. Then I simply add the limit parameter and I take the value which I pass in the parameter and supply that. Now all I need to do is go to the bottom here and call that method by saying get request URL pass the limit here as 10. So quickly jumping to Voli documentation to make everything clear. The URL is specified here. The third parameter is JSON object request. It says a JSON object to post with the request. Null is allowed and indicates no parameters will be posted along with the request. In our case, we are not going to post anything, hence we are going to pass null. And the fourth and the fifth parameters are as usual, response.listener and response.error listener. So let's go here and make our third parameter as null. So now we have response.listener as the fourth parameter and the last parameter as response.error listener. So at this point, everything looks pretty good. We have our get request, our URL, the null parameter to indicate that we are not posting anything, the response listener and the error listener. Let's see if this works. So I go to my class L, which is inside the package logging. I make a static method for T, which takes a context, a message, and makes a toast and displays that toast right there. And then we go back to the program fragment box office. Here, inside our on response, I simply display a toast that contains the response converted to a string format. Last but not the least, don't forget to add the request here. So at this point, if you run the app, let's take a look at what we see. So there's my main activity in pre-lollipop and lollipop devices. I start the main activity in both places and bam, take a look at that. Our toast is working perfectly. It showed us all the details. Now it's up to us to do that data in a nice format by putting it inside a recycler view, which we'll start working on in the next video. So in this video, I have shown you how to get the data with a JSON request through Voli and display that inside a toast. But obviously that's not going to help us much. We need to put that data inside a recycler view with the images and everything loaded appropriately. As you can see, even with all the minimal typing in this video, the video is still massive and hence it's going to take maybe two more parts to complete everything. In the next video, I'll try to dig into the recycler view and show you how to display all this data and parse it inside our Wally's on response method. 
In the meantime, if you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slidenoon and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.